the number one thought for me is just to try to make a good turn. And it's getting harder and harder every year, you know. You have more aches and pains, it's harder to get behind the ball, not as loose as I was. So it's just basically just trying to make a good full turn and uh, to get behind, and that kind of sets everything up for me. Relax, focus on the target, and load slow. Try to make a good turn. Staying down through impact. 12 times a winner on the PGA Tour and 17 times and counting on the PGA Tour champions, Steve Stricker is as spirited and mentally resilient as anyone in the game. His golf swing is evergreen and has an elegance in its simplicity to it. Big tee shot for Steve. Big. Well, it was solid, but it's on the same line as Alcar. Oh, it Ooh. got over. He sure did. did. I mean, that is down there. Big advantage. Oh, big time, yes. Good looking swing there by Stricker. Nice balance. His driving has been just spot on today. Just every tee shot right on the button. That looks good. Yep. Yeah, I think he smoked another. Heck, what a day of driving the ball, just hitting the ball. It's been fun to watch. And good shot there by Stricker right down the left center. Let's see how he does it. Steve Stricker's swing is a model of simplicity. I reached out to him and I said, Steve, what are you working on? And he said to me two things. First off, how his hands move and especially at the top of the swing. Then he referenced too that Father Time has caught up with him as it does with all of us. And so in the gym, he's had to work on just mobility and flexibility to ensure that he gets his body pivoting and turning properly. But at a dress here, I want you to notice this. You see the pitch of that shaft? It's almost pointing above his belly button because the handle is raised up a bit more, almost locking those wrists into position. And you will see that influence throughout his swing. As he starts back, you'll see the club head hover, a little forward press, and just very easy, effortless away from the golf ball. Zooming in on those hands in the club face, you see the hands there almost exactly the same as what they were at a dress. And the face of the club, is looking almost dead parallel with his spine angle. That means everything is square. From there, he continues to rotate his middle as the arms just swing up the body. And to the top of the swing there, the relationship between the face and the left arm is almost parallel. And that is because Steve focuses on that area there, those hands and those wrists. See the absence of movement? He's just turned that wrist alignment all the way to the top, and he's allowed the swing to grow in the pivots by just getting that left heel slightly off the ground there at the top of the golf swing. So set up for a beautiful transition. As he works down, he plants the left foot. Now into contact, notice how these hands have almost returned to exactly where they were at address, that left hand is bowed up, it's raised, that points the face a little off to the right. And he's in a situation where he's just very quiet, very passive through the feet. I want to zoom in on that area because as you watch him move now, watch the pressure shift from heel to toe and toe to heel. No sliding, no bouncing around the place, just very grounded. And that grounded movement in the feet supports this beautifully stable wrist alignment with that very square club face. From there, all he does is he follows the momentum of the club all the way through to a balanced follow through as he watches another well-struck drive soar its way right down the middle of the fairway. This is right over the left edge of the trees. This might need to go. It was really solid and it carries and it is perfect. He leads the PGA Tour champions on par five scoring average. Uh, actually does that on par fours and par threes, but who's counting, right? <laughs> well, certainly if you keep it up the right hand side, you can have a shot at this par five and two, but you must keep it up the right hand side. Stricker does yeah, just that. That is a beast of a drive there. That is really long. That hit over the hill. You oh. just don't see it down in the flat ever here. Here is Steve with a driver in the hand. And I want you once again to notice two things, the simplicity and the elegance of movement, and then also how he predetermines his angle of attack by how he sets his spine at address. Now, Steve has a long, shallow base to the arc. 
We'll talk about that in a second. But he creates an upward angle of attack by way of this tilting he has in the spine away from the target. That allows the club to travel more upward through contact. So at address, you can see the handle raised. Now as he starts, he just hovers the club ever so slightly, a little forward press, and then the move away from the golf ball. See the full extension there? There's no hinging in the wrists. It's like he swept the club head away from the ball in as wide a possible an arc as he is capable. You notice too in this left shoulder here, it really hasn't turned down as much as many. Again, he's just trying to turn and turn as much as possible. So from this wide position, he continues to rotate. He allows that left heel to raise a little bit and he stretches his arms out to his side. See again, that club shaft does not have to be parallel and it is not parallel again because how quiet those wrists are at the top of the swing. See no excess hinging there in that wrist. It's very reminiscent of the position we saw at contact. Now as he starts down, you'll see the movement with a plant in the foot, the body unwinds, it's led by the lower body. Now as we pause him just prior to impact, I want you to imagine a broomstick sweeping the turf. Watch this movement with Stricker, how the club head stays really low all the way through the base of the arc. A little further, look how that face is very square. And as he just moves back and forth, that club is really just grazing its way through the base of the arc. There's no attempt to try and hit upward. The upward strike is a function of the tilt in the body. But he is allowing those quiet wrist angles, the extended arms, to create this long, shallow base. In my opinion, as we take him through now, this is some of the reason why he puts such a heavy hit on the golf ball. As he follows through, you'll see the pressure shift in the quiet feet. The arms are at full extension. The eye lines following the swing all the way through. That long, wide base to the arc, coupled with the extension of the arms you see here, as he follows through, is the reason why he strikes the ball so squarely and so flush, and now as he progresses in years, still hits it with a good amount of pop off the tee. Boy, his tee shots have a great sound to him right now. He's hitting the ball right on the button. Right at it. What a great shot. Full location over on the right-hand side. He needs to take dead aim. He did. Wow, tap in birdie for Stricker. That was a very gettable hole location, and Stricker worked it exactly the right way. One of the all-time nice guys in the world, not just in golf, Steve Stricker. No question. 164 for Steve. This is a gorgeous-looking iron. Just a touch left of the flag. Boy, how many times has that sentence been uttered? This is a gorgeous iron from Steve Stricker. <laughs> Here is Steve Stricker with an iron club in hand. And I want to preface this analysis with the fact that he is just dynamite on strokes gained approach. So I want you to imagine that he is standing inside of a telephone booth and watch how he operates inside of that telephone booth with the body and the torso throughout, yet he never ever sacrifices width on either side of the golf swing with his arms. So at the start now, beautifully standard, the little forward press of the hands that sets the entire motion on its course. There's the forward press, little shift, and there's the very simple turn. Look how he's operating inside of his feet, inside his telephone booth, yet there's big extension there from the torso all the way to the club head. He continues to rotate around the core here as he reaches the top of the swing. Right there, he is covering the golf ball. See how the upper body is right over the top of the hips, the eye line right in the back of the golf ball, and he's setting up an environment where he can plug into the ground and then just rotate all the way through contact. Watch now the lower body leads, the core is unwinding, and the arms are right back in front of his body. Once again, eye line right over the top of it, and can you see the symmetry there? It's like his body is stacked over itself and everything has been driven by the pressure shift here through the feet. So now he's made, now watch that forward foot. 
the wrists are quiet, that forward foot, you'll see pressure shift toward the heel. That will guide the rotation of the body. And from here as the arms extend and we take him to the finish, watch how everything's driven by the lower body. That foot rolls over slightly, but shifts toward the heel. The arms remain extended up into that graceful, balanced follow through. And there's Strix lining up another beautiful iron strike that is pin seeking as always. Second shot for Steve Stricker. Way to the right side of that bunker, not a very good angle. This is some oh. shot by Stricker, great play. That is right on cue, that's what he does. He takes advantage. Steve Stricker is on the team. Well, it sets up good for his draw. Oh, and he's gonna get some release, look at this shot. <laughs> what a shot by Stricker. Steve Stricker with an iron in hand from down the line with lovely wife Nikki looking on as she always is. Now, we talked about the simplicity, the elegance, the wrist alignments. I want to talk here about how his forearms interact with each other because they have a huge influence on how the wrists move. So as we look at him here at address, you can see the arms hanging down gently from the shoulders, the beautiful bending here through the hips and through the knees. That is classic posture. But see here how the right elbow, his trailing elbow, is slightly beneath the leading elbow. And once again, we can get a glimpse there of that left wrist. It's in ulnar deviation or slightly popped up. Watch how the elbows retain this relationship throughout the swing. So as he starts away, very simple away. And if we stop him right here, I want you to see there between the forearms how Steve has a triangle built. That triangle now is going to be retained throughout the action. So now as he continues to wind up, we get him to the second spot, and you see there that triangle has not deviated. Still very quiet at the top with the wrists, but that's all a function of how the triangle moves. Now as he starts down, you can see the lower body unwinds, and look at that triangle now reformed on the way down. So very simple now as he just rotates and propels that triangle through contact all the way to the finish. Again, the quiet feet. And right there, just for good measure, there is triangle number four. That triangle from the start through the finish is retained. The relationship between left forearm, right forearm is retained. And all Steve does is turn around that and retain that situation. If you want to quieten up your wrist throughout your swing, focus on that relationship between the forearms. That triangle, it's a triangle for success. Just a wedge. John, you impressed with Stricker? I mean, I've got a smile on my face, incredible. His game is suited and made for major championship play. He's long, he's straight, nice iron player understands his limitations and the best short game out here. Oh, come on. Hey, is he just in case you think you're just a little bit better than me? Not yet. Here is Steve Stricker Greenside. And I've got to say this. I would rank him of all the golfers I've gotten to see, and I've gotten to see many, thankfully. He is as good as anyone in the game, and I would say probably top five with a wedge in hand. Now, pitching, he is a virtuoso. Now you see those arrows? Watch as the club goes back, how the head moves down and forward. That creates an environment where you can compress balls, make ball then turf contact, yet still shallow the strike. It's a beautiful move, and it's something that current FedEx Cup champion Victor Hovland in 2023 has worked on to improve his pitching around the greens. So here's Steve at address. First off, notice how there's just slight downward pressure there into the forward foot. See how the hands are slightly in front of the lofted wedge. And I'm going to draw a circle around Steve's head just as a reference. So there he is. So as the club sweeps away from the golf ball, watch how his upper body drifts toward the target. See how the heads move to the left side as he plays of the circle. The right as you look at it. The arm width, that's the same. That's not gonna vary. Remember the quietness and his focus on his wrists. Now, as Steve swings down, 
you will see that the head will just kiss the edge, then move upward. And as that happens, that shallows off the strike. Do so you see that beautiful move there? So there's a slight lean toward the target, then a push up. And from there, you see how the body just turns the club into a balanced follow through? This is truly magnificent. It's easily repeatable, and it is why Steve Stricker is just incredible with a lofted wedge in his hand. with a wedge in his hand. Steve Stricker lighting it up. Leaves himself the only uphill look on the green right below the hole. Let's keep it right of that bunker down the left side. That was a good tee shot by Stricker. He set it up right at that hollow and hit his natural shot, which is a little draw, and it works perfect. Well, this is all over it. He just can't help himself right he, now, he? He just cannot help himself. You're exactly right. He can't get out of his own way, and gosh, he's stuck on knocking the flag down. What a swing.